What's up guys? We're back. It's Friday, and so you know what time it is. It's time for the Paul Saladino Show. Oh, wait, no. Sorry, what do we call it again? Oh yeah, What the Fitness. So this week, of course, our friend Paul Saladino providing more excellent content for us, which we truly appreciate. We may have to rename the show, but then again, our dear friend Mark Hyman might be upset with that. And Steve also might be upset. And Dave Asprey might be upset. Actually, I don't think any of them would be upset. My goal is to get to the point where charlatans wake up in the middle of the night and they're like, oh, oh what the fitness. Oh. So let's see what Paul has to say this week. Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe it's not that bad. Y'all know me. I give credit where credit's due, but it's probably pretty bad. Diet soda is damaging your gut. Please yep. stop drinking it's bad. this. Diet soda may be better than regular soda Hold up. So from first a weight off, loss perspective. At least he's got a shirt on in this video. Something about people walking around grocery stores yanking stuff off shelves and be like, you shouldn't eat this. And then like, have you guys ever noticed that every single person who does this has them crazy eyes? Where they're like, you don't want to eat this. So I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just me. Diet soda may be better than regular soda from a weight loss perspective, but I don't know how anyone can possibly encourage or condone the drinking of this diet soda or any drinks with artificial sweeteners in them. <gasps> there is solid evidence that artificial sweeteners like aspartame, sucralose, and saccharin negatively affect communication between bacteria within the gut. And he cites in order an for the bacterial study. populations in your gut to be healthy and balanced, they need to be able to communicate with one another. They do this with a process called quorum sensing, which is a bit like all the bacteria in your gut sending text messages to each other. Artificial sweeteners <laughs> inhibit the process, potentially imbalancing bacterial populations in the gut. And we know that a balanced microbiome is essential for optimal health. Why are you drinking diet soda? So credit where credit's due, Paul got it right that it's better from a weight loss perspective. He cites an in vitro study using very high amounts of artificial sweetener. So if you think that in vitro studies, you know, petri dish studies are more important then human randomized control trials, then I have a bridge out back that I would like to sell you. So what did the human randomized control trials say? So basically the latest human, human randomized control trials suggest that artificial sweeteners may have an effect on the gut. So there were two studies originally that came out in humans that showed no effect of artificial sweeteners on the gut. And then more recently, there were two that came out that we've previously covered on this channel that showed that they did have an effect on the gut. However, here's the problem. This effect on the gut, we are not sure if it's bad, neutral, or positive. An example of that is with aspartame, they actually found that some of the species of bacteria that it increased actually were associated with lower rates of obesity and better insulin sensitivity. And in another study, they showed increased production of a fatty acid called butyrate with this change in the gut. Well, butyrate, again, is associated with better metabolic rate and reduced risk of type 2 diabetes. I could argue, actually quite convincingly based on that data, that artificial sweeteners actually have a positive effect on the gut microbiome based on human randomized control trials, not petri dish studies where they're giving a thousand times the normal dose of artificial sweeteners. I don't know if you guys know this, but just taking an artificial sweetener putting on a Petri dish is not the same thing as what happens in your actual body. Now, I'm not trying to shit on in vitro research in general. It is a very important step in the scientific process. However, it is down here on the hierarchy of evidence. And then, well, we have animal studies. Yes, and in animal studies where they're giving massive doses of these artificial sweeteners, we see negative effects. But in the human randomized control trials, we don't tend to see these effects and the effects we do see, we're not sure if they're good, bad, or neutral, okay? So we need more research on this for sure. It's irresponsible to say that artificial sweeteners are bad for your gut and definitely irresponsible to say they're bad for your health. One of the things we know is bad for your gut microbiome is obesity. People with obesity tend to have worse diversity and lower levels of certain gut microbiota that are considered healthy and positive. You cannot tell me, and this happens, every, this happens every time we put up one of these videos. People in the comments will say, all I did was cut out regular soda and switch to diet soda and I lost 30, 50, 100 pounds. I've seen all those numbers before. And so let's say artificial sweeteners weren't the very best thing you could do. It's still better than being overweight or obese. 
And so if those tools help you lose weight and keep it off, they're gonna be better for your overall health and better, quite frankly, for your microbiome than being overweight or obese. Now, if you're somebody who's at a healthy body weight, you don't like artificial sweeteners, whatever. If you don't wanna consume them, fine. I'm not advocating for artificial sweetener consumption. But let's not shame people from using a tool that could be very beneficial overall to their health. As per usual, Paul cherry picking his studies. Anybody wonder why he picks out an in vitro study as opposed to the human randomized control trials that exist? There's one of two possible explanations. Both are not very good. Uh, the first one is he's aware of that research and is purposefully omitting it. The second is He's not aware of that research because he's never actually bothered to do a literature sweep. Neither one of these two are very good outcomes. So this is why it's very important not to follow people who just cherry pick research, but who give a full breath. And actually, you guys have seen, I'll make a devil's advocate argument quite often. Uh, I'll still tell you what I think, but it's important to show both sides of a story. Now, if you want to see an even bigger example of that, I did a very long 280 plus citation almost 48 page Google doc originally article on Paul Saladino's appearance on the Joe Rogan podcast where I debunk every single one of his claims that was BS, all the cherry picked literature and give a full breadth of research literature to give you the real story. And I also give him credit where you get something right, which is like twice in the entire thing. But anyways, we'll put that link in the description as well so you can check it out so you can see just how full of crap this guy is. Guys, I get a lot of questions. Hey, where do you get your shirts? So this shirt is from a company that I'm sponsored by called The Tailored Athlete. And I love their shirts and their jeans are the most comfortable jeans I've ever worn. Yes, I get a kickback from being an affiliate, but honest to God, I love their clothes and I cannot recommend them enough. They fit great, especially if you're muscular, you have bigger legs and arms than normal. They're gonna form fit you, look great, and they feel great, super comfortable. Links in the description, cannot recommend them enough. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next week.